Und Earth. And welcome to another Acorn Christian Live. It's good to be back with you again. We hope that you're well. Um, my name is Lisa. If this is your first time joining us, we've also got Wes here on the screen. who will be uh, finalising or concluding our series uh, shortly. But firstly, I just want to let you know what's happening um, throughout July and August. The first is that we have got our final For Those Who Pray podcast available wherever you listen to your podcasts from. We're looking at how we can pray for the dying. Um, so please do check it out. We've taken our time with it. It's a little bit longer than normal, but we hope that it is one that really does help you when it comes to praying in those moments. Now, we don't have any live events taking place in August, but we do have a very special resource called Heroes of Faith, which you can find on our website. If you head over, to the downloads and store page, you can find all of the episodes that have now been uploaded. And with us, you can explore those people who have gone before us in the Christian healing ministry and hear some incredible stories. Uh, there's triumph, there's stuff that's not so triumphant, um, but it's just a wonderful opportunity to learn more about the Christian healing ministry. So do check that out over August if you would like a resource. We're also really looking forward to coming back in September um, and introducing the Acorn Lounge to you. And this is an opportunity to get hold of some um, tools probably for the Christian healing ministry and your own journey of Christian healing as well. Just over an hour, one evening. So it's from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. I think the first one is on the 8th of September. It's just a more relaxed environment where we can go through some of these uh, topics together. So you can find all the information for that on our website as well. And we'll also be diving back into the School of Healing, where we're going to be exploring together whether uh, well, we'll be looking at healing in, in the Old Testament, but whether also it's in the atonement. So that's something maybe to mull over uh, between now and September. And uh, you can book yourself on for that event. We've also got a Coffee Pods uh, series coming up. I've not put it on here, but I should have. And it's just another series looking at the healing psalms. So you may have realised we've been singing some newer songs recently. Um, and Wes and I just chat through the inspiration behind these and how they came about. So that is also available from our website. But now let's spend some time bringing, um, bringing ourselves before God. And Lord, we lift your name high, Jesus. And we just hope and pray, Lord, that our worship, our adoration for you brings you joy as well, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Every chain Let us know 
come to this moment of prayer now you may want to just tell God that you love him and just use this opportunity as we're together to invite him in and receive from him today I do ask Holy Spirit that you will pour out a fresh anointing of yourself into our spirit and onto us today. I thank you that you are our healer. And I ask Holy Spirit for those that we're gonna pray for now, that they will know that you are their healer. Lord, I bring you Bernie and Pam, David and Sandra, Jenny, Stuart and Abigail. I bring you Noni, Lord. May she know that you are her Prince of Peace, Jesus, in body, mind, 
and spirit. And that you are her healer. Lord, I bring you Gilda, Peter, Noreen, Charlotte, and Tilly. Bring you Diane, Carol, Paul, and Gaynor. Bring you Andrew, Chris, Jim, and Anne. Kada, Simon, Paul, and Jean. Feel free to take a moment now to bring anybody to God who may be on your heart. So Lord, I ask that you will hover over and within each of these lives, that you will restore them by your powerful and gracious love, and that you'll bring them into new life today, Lord. And I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Wonderful. We are concluding the Spirit of the Lord series before heading into the summer. And um, so today we are exploring how the Spirit of the Lord has sent me. So let me take you through our readings and then we'll hear from Wes. So I'll skip this reading because we've done it twice, um, but it will be on the screen when Wes is talking. But um, oh no, sorry, I think I've missed a I think I've missed a um, reading, Wes. No, that's just the one. That's just the one. I'll read it. <laughs> okay, from Isaiah 61. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. Thank you, uh, Lisa. Uh, amazing words just on the screen as you look at them. Just think that as we looked over the last couple of weeks, and particularly last week, Jesus will actually say these words of himself. And we spent time, whether we are those praying for others to receive healing, or whether we are those in need of prayer for healing, we spent these last uh, two weeks and now today just taking a look at the Spirit of the Lord being upon us, anointing us, and now we've come to the place of sending us. It's interesting, isn't it, that it's Jesus who will say to the disciples, um, the 11, because obviously Judas isn't uh, there anymore, but then possibly Matthias and maybe the 120 or the 500 who'd gathered, we, we have no idea how many there, but Jesus will communicate to the disciples and he will um, tell them to remain in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes upon them. 
and it says uh, that you will receive power. And then he goes on to say, and you will be my witnesses. And of course, the word witness is the word martyr. And uh, the reason that the word martyr means what we understand it as martyr is because so many of the witnesses, which is the original meaning of the word, uh, became martyrs in the uh, first century for the gospel and for their faith in Jesus. But here, as Jesus has taken these uh, words upon himself and he speaks them in a sense, uh, not just over himself, but upon his body, if you like, the body of the church, as well as us as his disciples. And you could say those words of yourself as a disciple of Jesus, that the spirit of the Lord is upon you because the Lord has anointed you to proclaim good news to the poor and he sent you. It's uh, lovely that in the story in the Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter two, when the Holy Spirit comes, isn't it wonderful that immediately the whole church is involved in something that matters to God? This wonderful love affair that he has with humanity. And suddenly it's not just Jesus and not even the 11 who are caught up in this, but it's all of us. It's the whole body of disciples, the whole church are now caught up in this thing. Because having received the Spirit, having had the Spirit upon us, as well as within us, and we talked about the the indwelling of the spirit that comes when we come to faith in Christ. But also there is the on dwelling, the empowering of the spirit. But this idea that of being anointed and it's funny, isn't it, that we get used to telling people in a sense that we're saved, that, that you know, we belong to Jesus. Isn't it interesting that we could also equally say with equal confidence, not just that we're saved, but we are anointed. We are loved by the Father, saved by the Son, and anointed by the Spirit. And that's the message that comes through Pentecost, isn't it? The church is now anointed. It's not just one person anointed, but as Jesus has breathed on the, on the disciples in, in, the, uh, um, in the upper room after the resurrection, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now the whole church receives the Holy Spirit. But go back to me to that passage in uh, Acts where it says, and you will be my witnesses. And it's caught up, isn't it, in this word to. He has sent me to. He has anointed me to. And of course, the spirit comes with incredible intent and incredible purpose. So whether today you're uh, among those who are praying for others to receive healing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, or whether you're somebody who's saying, I need that today, Wes, I, I need that prayer for healing over my own life. Let me just say that the Holy Spirit has anointed the church, has anointed us, has anointed you, has anointed Lisa, anointed me, but not just so that we might feel nice about life, but he's anointed us to do something. It's true, isn't it, that every child of God is saved from things because they are saved for things. You are saved from your past that you might live for the future, for your destiny. And so Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me and he has sent me to sent me to what? Well, just take a look at this. First of all, isn't it interesting that Jesus says the Spirit has sent me? And, you know, of all the other possible isms and ideologies and faiths and things, they're all telling us that we need to improve in order to reach God, that we have to come up to him. But of course, the message of Jesus, the message of the New Testament, the message of the Bible, is that God comes down to help us. Because Jesus was sent. He was sent for your saving. He was sent for your healing. He was sent for your rescuing. 
He was sent for your deliverance. He was sent for your redeeming. He was sent that you might know the love of God. But when you look at it, what's happening here? Well, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me and the spirit has sent me to. And the first thing it says that he sent me to and it gives us a list of things. Do you know, I love the fact that Jesus searches for people in the Gospels. There are a number of stories when he specifically goes and searches people out, but also that people, as people search for him, but God is looking for them. And God searched out for the broken hearted. He searched out for those who were held captive to things that they had no power over to be released from. He sent him to the prisoners, to the things that lock us in. And he sent us that we might find the way when we lost it. I mean, when you think about this incredible uh, thing to those in darkness finding their way, and maybe today that's a place that you feel. You may feel that today life has got broken. That perhaps there are things that interact with your life that you are not able to get out of to overcome to move on things that perhaps have locked you in rather than setting you free and of course things that leave us in darkness that make us lose the way isn't it wonderful jesus says the spirit has come upon me and he has anointed me and he sent me for exactly that the spirit anoints Jesus, rests on his church, even now, that those whose lives have become broken, who are held captive by things they can't move away from, where life has got locked in and there is no way to move, and where we seem to be in darkness and lost the way, and the Spirit has been sent for exactly those things. He goes on to say that he's been sent to, and, and the, the words are lovely, aren't they? He said that to proclaim and to preach. It's sort of biblical words, but it, if you put it this way, it really says that, that he's been sent to make sure that you get the message. The Spirit has come to make sure that we get the message, that we understand that Jesus has been sent for us for all these sort of things, to speak the message to tell us the truth. Do you know one of the things I love about Jesus is that he always tells me the truth. He tells me the truth about God. He tells me the truth about life. And he tells me the truth about me. And he will tell you the truth about you. And you might think, but where's that? I'm not really sure that I want someone to tell me the truth about me. Do you know, knowing the truth from the lips of Jesus is unlike no, hearing it from anybody else. Hearing the truth from Jesus is like hearing a truth so clean and so pure that it's the thing that you want above everything else. In fact, hearing the truth even about ourselves from Jesus is like somebody opening the window and letting us out. And it says the spirit is upon me because he sent me to ensure that we understand how God feels, to get the message. But it then goes on to say, not only to speak, but he's sent to comfort us. And it's a lovely word, isn't it? To comfort all who uh, mourn. Mourn over the state of things, not just people who've been lost. But we grieve over lots of things, don't we? lost opportunities. We've all experienced that over this last 18 months or so. Things that could have been, might have been. Do you know, some people mourn over and they're, they're afraid of missing out. It's called fear of missed opportunities. Sometimes it leaves us locked in so we can't decide one thing or the other because we're sure that if we choose this, then the other will be better and vice versa. But we mourn over lots of things. The Beatitudes say that those who mourn over the state of their own heart and life find mercy. We might mourn over the state of the nation. We might mourn over uh, relationships that are broken. 
and it says that this Jesus was sent by the Spirit to give comfort for those things. He comes to tell us the truth in a way that makes us want to live. He comes to give us comfort with a love that is so pure and so clean that we feel safe with it. But it also goes, it goes on to say, not just to speak to us, not only just to comfort us, but also to provide for those who grieve in Zion. And, and of course, part of this um, story from Isaiah is about part of Israel's history, the things that they've done and the things that they've lost. But beyond that, it's a much, much bigger story. It's a story about all of us. It's a story about the things that happen to us in body and mind and spirit. And the text says that he comes to provide for us. And the word you could understand that is to be graced, to be given things that you didn't expect. To be lavished upon when you thought, mm, I'm not going to get anything. You know, when you expect uh, an empty bowl that suddenly it's filled and filled and filled and filled and there is enough for you and enough for everybody else to provide for to grace those to give lavishly to those who have come to that place of sorrow and grief and loss and of course it's this wonderful thing that we don't necessarily think about those um sort of language now because I don't know about you I don't know how big's your wardrobe I mean it's just a small thing really but how big is it? I mean how, how much have you got in there because you very rarely think about what am I going to cover myself with and of course you know when you go to some cultures and, and there is only one set of clothes it's the ones that they're wearing and they have to look after them because if they get torn or or, what, or, or ripped, what else are they going to wear? But this text just has these lovely words. To give uh, the crown of beauty instead of ashes, you know, instead of ashes over the head. You know, we talk about sackcloth and ashes, a crown, something that gives nobility and dignity to us. He talks about the oil of joy for mourning and in the bible one of the pictures um that the oil is for is for joy for gladness funnily enough so i don't suggest that you get a bottle of olive oil and pour it over you but that was very much how um sometimes at weddings and uh, you know other events that they express joy you just got anointed uh, with this my friend was in the meeting where you know you're expecting the little sign on the cross and the oil and actually in the end the guy tipped the whole bowl of oil over his head literally all of it the oil of joy for gladness and yes i bet you're glad you weren't in that meeting at the time but oil is a picture of joy but it also says and a garment of praise for a spirit that is downcast and is heavy do you know the thing is that Jesus has been sent to cover you, to cover your shame and, and, and your exposure. Do you know, can I just say that God never comes to humiliate you? He never comes to expose you and make you look ridiculous. In fact, he comes to do the opposite. When our body was vulnerable, it was Christ who came and put his body in front of our body that we might be covered to praise, not to sing. The, the garments that befit the people who come to God and say, God.
So I think we may have lost Wes uh, briefly. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I will take us through to um, our final song of uh, worship. And then if he returns, um, I'm sure he will lead us in prayer. But let's, um, let's just take this wonderful truth of being covered by Jesus um, into this next song. Touch my heart, touch my mind, touch my whole being with your grace. Touch my eyes, give me sight that I may clearly see. So you may just now um, want to use this short opportunity um, to reach out to Jesus, to thank him that he covers us, that he speaks to us, that he provides for us, and that he saves us. Lord, I ask for everybody who's with us now, whatever time they are tuning in and wanting to receive from you, that you will pour out your anointing on them today. An oil of joy, Lord, in their spirits, in their minds and on their lives. Come Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are our provider. Love you, Lord. Amen. So thank you for joining us. Apologies that Wes went so quickly. Um, but we look forward to, to being back with you again in September. Uh, do check out the Heroes of Faith resource, which is on our website, um, as well as the podcasts that will continue to come out every Monday during August. But we hope that you have a wonderful uh, month. We look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.